Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, are you ready? Let's call for that daily bread. Join me in faith right now and say, Father, I make demands for my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. See, we say these things because we believe. Paul says, we have in the same spirit of faith as it is written. I believe, therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. We speak. Now our speaking here is making demands for our daily bread. That's our speaking. So because we believe God gives us daily bread, not just gives us daily bread, he gives us our daily bread. And so we speak by accent. Praise God. And that's what we're doing, doing on this broadcast every day on this broadcast. And don't just sit down there. I keep telling you this. Don't just sit down there and say, okay, say it. Demand it. Own up this truth. I'm going to be asking God for my daily bread every day. Don't say it in your mind. Open your mouth and ask for it. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. For what reason? That your joy may be full. So whatever will cause your joy to be full today, be bold to ask from the Lord. Praise God. Yes. Is it for just that purpose? No, me, I'm asking. I'm, I'm asking because of the kingdom of God. No, Jesus said that your joy may be full. Just stick to what Jesus has said. Every other thing you add on that is your own religiosity. And don't think it will please God. <laughs> Praise God. If, if you are happy, God is happy. Do you know that? So sometimes we, we think, uh, ah, you know, you know, there are believers who will catch themselves excited and say, ah, ah, I'm sinning. No. The Bible says in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. What do you understand that to me? God doesn't love it when your face is all gloomy and you use that to depict holiness. You always frown, no smiling at all. And you use that to depict seriousness. Say, no, this life is serious. Hey, laugh, smile. What did Jesus say? Cheer up, I have overcome the world. What do you think cheer up mean? Be excited, be happy, rejoice. Praise God. Why? Not because you will go and overcome the world. Say, I have overcome the world. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we bless you. It's your joy to see us happy and joyful. And so, Lord, we align ourselves to your plans and your program. And we release joy from our heart. And that's why we love to relate with you in this truth. And so with joy, we receive our daily bread for the purpose that our joy will be full. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let's, let's go down to our scripture, John chapter 17 and verse 22. John 17, 22. Now, you know, why do we read this scripture almost every day? Because the moment we look at it, there's a light that beams on it. And, and different things begin to come out from it. Different thoughts from the Lord. Now, that's the truth about the Word of God. See, now this is the Bible. But when I look at it, I look at it with the intent to receive the Word of God from it. It is not my reading it that is the word of God. You need to understand this. As I read it, the word of God begins to come to me. Yes. Because this Bible creates an atmosphere. What atmosphere in it? Now, just like we said, these words are inspired. Now, when we say they are inspired, we're not saying the... the the writers 
sat down and prayed and God began to tell them what to write. No. For example, this is a reporting story that we're, we're reading from the book of John. John was reporting an event that took place. He saw it. He heard Jesus pray this prayer. And so he was writing what he heard Jesus pray. See? So it was reported. But then he's reporting something Jesus said to God. And so think about that atmosphere. Now, because he was writing this in the name of the Lord and for the sake of the Lord, anytime I read this, what happens? The Spirit of God begins to speak to me. See that now? That's how we say the Word of God. So when we look at this, verse 22, John chapter 17, And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them. That's a normal statement. But because the word of God, the spirit of God is involved, as I look at this scripture, that they may be one, even as we are one. And I begin to meditate on it. And guess what begins to happen? I begin to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because he's my teacher. He begins to teach me. He said, now he, he, you begin to hear things like this. Do you know what I mean by oneness? That they may be one. Mm, I've never thought about that. Let me look at that again. And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. Wow, wait. I think I'm getting a new understanding from this. Yeah, that's the Holy Spirit working in you. You see, whenever the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, he, he enlightens your mind. Yeah, he enlightens your mind. He tells you things you didn't know before, things you didn't think before. You know, last week I was telling you something like, we must begin to trust the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives as individuals. You see, we will never achieve growth. We will never achieve oneness in the Spirit until we as individuals begin to fully participate with the Holy Spirit as individuals. Now, what brings us together in this oneness is the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's the Holy Spirit that brings us into this oneness. Now, it's not the Holy Spirit that will say, I'm gathering all of you to so-so and so place so that you will all become one. No, that's not what he's going to do. That's not the way of the Lord. Every one of us walking in our own journey in the Holy Spirit, not minding what the other person is doing, but being focused on what you are doing and what the Holy Spirit is doing in you. And guess what's going to happen? We will all grow and come to that place where we realize that, hey, we are one. Praise God. Yes, we are one. We will discover we talk alike, we understand alike, yes. Even though it's from different perspective, but then we will realize that we're all saying the same thing. See? Now what we have today, I understand, it's because the Holy Spirit is taking me in this dimension, I now feel that is the right dimension. Now, these are things between spirits and men. I'll, I'll, I'll share this with you, and I, I pray you understand it. These are things between spirits and men. Now, you know, if, you, if, you've, been a, if you've been a Christian for a long while, now these days we, we, we don't really have those things um, popular. Maybe in some areas, maybe, maybe I'm the one that I've been in a different environment. But they were then, when we were much younger, you had this story of grand occultic masters giving their hearts to Christ. You, you, some of you must have heard. And then, or um, a woman who was second in command to the devil. Now, you know how they all come out and say, I was second in command to Lucifer. Oh, I was, I was the one in charge of this thing. 
And I remember those days, we used to say, but well, come, I don't understand. How many people were second in command to Lucifer? This one said I was second in command to Lucifer. This one said I was second in command to... And it appears both of them were working with Lucifer at the same period of time. Now, you see, Ali Masupredi, when, when it comes to spiritual things, now, of course, they, those, people, those people are lying. Now, when I say they are lying, not because they even intend to lie. They are telling you what they experienced. But the truth is this, what they experienced was a lie. I mean, it was a make-believe. Satan lies. He, that's his language. So whatever he tells you, when Satan tells you, you are my second in command, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's trapping you. But there's something I want to pull out from those statements. Now, those people feel because of that communication, they feel they were so important to the devil. Say that now. I was second in command. And they didn't know that Satan was doing other works with other people. And eventually he will use other people to destroy them. That, that's, he, he's a thief, he kills and he destroys. Now, because they, they think they function in the realm of the spirit, and because they think they had access to certain informations, they felt they were so important. Now, that's how the realm of the spirit is in itself so even people who who have walked with god right and the spirit of god begin to inform them certain things begin to take them in different in certain dimensions now there is this mentality it's a human thing it's not it's not a godly thing there is this mentality you begin to create and think look i'm the most important person to god because he told me this are you getting what I'm saying now? So you begin to even boast and begin to push yourself forward before others. I say no. And before you know what's happening, you begin to bring in your own ideas and push them because somehow you have felt, oh God, I'm important to God. And because I'm important to God, everything I say is right. No, sir. No. We must still vet everything that you say. We must still vet everything you do. When I mean vet, I'm not talking about us coming together and say, let us vet. No, I'm talking about before I respond to your words, before I respond to your actions, before I accept it to be true, I've got to receive witness from the Holy Spirit that it is right. Now, that's how every believer is supposed to function. It's like what I'm sharing with you now. I don't expect if you're a real Christian, I don't expect you to take my words like, oh, because he said it, it must be right. No. All I'm doing is create the atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to bring the word of the Lord to you. That's the purpose of this broadcast. I'm not going to lie to you concerning that. See? And, and I'm not thinking everybody must listen to me and take what I say. No. Neither do I doubt what I say. Everything I say, I say because I believe that's what he has given me to say. Now, what I expect of you is, wow, Holy Spirit, what this person is saying, talk to me about it. Uh -huh. When you do that, the Holy Spirit begins to take you in your own, your own journey. See? Now, I'm not afraid of that. See? You see, I come in a predisha. We are talking about the glory of Jesus. As a preacher, you must never be afraid that people will not believe you. It doesn't matter who believes you or who doesn't believe you. What matters is are you walking in the truth of what he told you? You will understand one thing about God. When we get to heaven, it's not the man who pulled the largest crowd that will be most honored in heaven. You better know that. It's not the one who had the most amount of money on earth that will be announced or that will be crowned the most important person in heaven. No. It's how much knowledge of God you were able to walk in as an individual. How much knowledge you were able to walk in as an individual. The truth, Jesus said, you shall know the truth. Now, that's the mark of a disciple. 
the mark of a disciple, he comes to the place of truth. Now, what does it mean come to the place of truth? I'll tell you this. You don't know truth from day one. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't. It takes a while. And truth is not what a man tells you. You don't know truth from a man. No, you don't. No man is capable of giving you truth. Now, I would speak my truth to you. But because I said it, doesn't mean you will walk in the truth. Even though I'm walking in the truth. So I share my experience with you. Now, what I share, what I share with you, no matter how real it is to me, is an information to you. What do you do with that information? And, and, no, this is where a lot of believers um, make the mistake in their lives. See, they think, oh, if, if Pastor Atubo did it, I will do it. Yes, there are things I may do. There are things you will see Jesus do. And then we attempt to do it and we get some result. But to sustain that result, you must come to the place of knowledge as Jesus came to the place of knowledge. Or whoever is walking in it came to the place of knowledge. And the only person that will bring into that place of knowledge is the Holy Spirit. So Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you shall know the truth. Hey, Lord, <laughs> is your word not truth already? Examine that statement. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And then the truth will make you free. So the, the, point, the, the point of arrival is freedom. Right? So that statement by Jesus lets you know that you're not free from the one. Now, are you free from the devil? Yes, you're free from the devil. The day you got born again, you were made free from the devil. But then the freedom Jesus was talking about is experiencing liberty. And liberty is dominion. See? So... You want to experience liberty in your finances. You want to experience liberty in the place of health, walking in health. You understand what I'm talking about? Now, at different points in life, different situations come up in your life. You want to walk in the truth concerning those things. How do you walk in the truth? You read books. Reading books will give you information, great information. But there is nothing that will bring you truth like engaging personally with the holy spirit oh he's the only one jesus said his ministry is to guide you into all truth and that guidance is as an individual guidance it's not a group guidance he doesn't tell all of us come i will take all of you into truth no see that's why when jesus asked the disciples that question who do you say that i am Peter spoke up. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, wow. He said, flesh and blood have not revealed that to you, but my father in heaven. And I say to you, Peter, Jesus didn't use that to measure all of the disciples. He didn't use that to say, now you guys are matured. You now know who I am. No, he's specifically spoke to Peter because Peter received that knowledge personally the Holy Spirit brought Peter to the place of truth concerning who Jesus is he said I say to you Peter upon this rock I will build my church see why because Peter had gotten to that place of revelation and it was a personal thing in this work we work by a personal revelation and anything your pastor or any teacher or any preacher would do for you is to bring you enough information to make you start your journey but you see that journey no one can lead you into that journey it's a personal journey a personal one where the Holy Spirit takes you by the hand and he begins to lead you that's the glory we are talking about. That's the glory of Jesus. Praise God. My time is up. But listen to me. 
There's, there's a beautiful thing God is doing in this season. That's why I'm bringing you this teaching. God is doing something beautiful. And as you yield yourself to Him, you can't be lazy now, brothers and sisters. No, you can't. You've got to throw yourself in the hands of the Holy Spirit and let Him begin to guide you day by day and by day. And I trust the Spirit of God will practically show you how in these coming days. Praise God. I bless you today. And I declare that the hand of the Lord rests upon you to teach you and to bring you to the place of truth. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.